Hello family, Dr. Ross here. Welcome back to the channel. We decided to make a new gate for the ranch. A really, really nice gate. We're going to do it in a style called the English field gate and we're going to make it out of cedar. Why don't you come along and help me? I'll be right back. One of the hardest things ever to get a square cut on a 4x4. Four four. These 4x4 four four cedar posts are going to be the end pieces of my two gates. Just cleaning up the edges. I plan to use a mortise and tenon joint. The mortise is the groove in the post and then the tenon would be the tongue on the other piece that fits in. The difficulty in this kind of joint is it has to be a really precise fit to be strong. Well, I roughed in the holes, but then I made a jig on my table saw that will just guide the router. So the router's trapped inside there. So the width will be right. I'm freehand in the ends. Uh, the sides is perfect for the width, but then the end uh, end cut's gonna be blind, so it'll fit in. fit right in there nice and snug and then I'll pull nail them in got 20 of these and then the end pieces will be done I'm going to make it come out to exactly 10 feet on each gate and these are going to mortise into the side posts three quarters of an inch each so I've got to cut the notches now and I cut them to length so that once they mortise into the end posts which are four by fours It'll come out to exactly 10 feet. The cedar wood has a smooth and a rough side. And I'll figure out how to alternate that for some contrast on the gate. 
I got all these notches cut in the flat slats and I'm getting ready to assemble the first panel. I'm going to use some glue and nails. I'm hoping this thing is going to last for a couple decades, so why? Why would I scrimp? I don't know. An outdoor thing like this. I'm going to be exposed to this much weather. I'm going to benefit from some of these. Some of these are furniture building tactics that I'm using. However, this glue is legit for exterior. Wood glue will stop your stain, but I do not plan on staining this, actually. I'm going to finish it natural. I did not trial fit any of the pieces. I just laid them out and glued them, so I guess we're going to find out. Totally winging it here. It'll be good to have a partner for this part. Couple of them are tight. Is the couch moving? Can you tell? Hmm. Well, well, well. That's a tight fit. Don't have any clamps this long. I, I dreamed up an idea of maybe using straps. It's perfectly square, so I think I'll nail it. Those are going to be bolted. That's just to hold it until I get the bolts in. That's going pretty well. So let's put some bolts in here.
I mean, that's going to be bolted together really, really well. Using galvanized hardware for the outdoors. Hopefully this thing will last a while. Last time I had this many bolts to cut off was when we were doing the flatbed trailer. Remember that? Had to edit out a couple hours of just cutting and tightening bolts. Okay, what do you guys think? That's going to be pretty cool. Probably weighs... Hmm, maybe, let's find out. Fifty-five pounds, I was going to say seventy. Well, now all I have to do is build another one, a whole another. All right, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Well, this is the top, and this is the left-hand gate looking from the back. The hinges are here. trying to center center them on these two rails. What I also like about that is it's going to hold the it's going to hold the whole thing together. It's these big strap hinges are bolted to the post and the rail, so effectively tying the whole thing together. I still have the router set up for when I made the recesses in the side of these, but much more difficult than this is. That may seem tedious, but it actually makes it a piece of cake. Just knock it out with my chisel. So before I got the microphone, it was really bad when it would be raining out on the roof. Messed up the sound on the GoPro, so hopefully this microphone setup will make it much better for you guys. It's really raining now. I don't know if you can hear it or not. Yes. I'm just eyeballing it. Sometimes the eyeball is better to be trusted. It's all relative, but since the world in its natural state isn't square and perfect, a lot of times if you make something perfectly level, it doesn't look right against the landscape. And the eyeball should take precedent, especially in something like this that's going to be out in nature and be compared to the surrounding landscape. 
once I built a fence and I was really obsessing about it being perfectly level. But the hill that it was built on sloped so that when you stood back and looked at it, it looked terribly bad. It was optical illusion. But what I've learned is when you're building something out in nature that's going to be looked at as part of the landscape, um, it's better to go with the eye than with the level. <laughs> We're using these huge strap hinges, partly because they look so good. And that's true to the design. I don't know if I talked about the design. This is called an English field gate. And uh, we were watching BBC TV and everybody out in the countryside in Europe has these gates. Extremely common design in France and Italy in the shows we were watching. And we just love the design. So we're going with that. I didn't have any plans. Um, just looked at just looked at Google Images and came up with my own plan. But I can send you all the measurements if you'd like to have them. We're going to put up a couple of railroad ties in the ground. And that's what we'll attach it to. We'll put the strap hinges on the back side of the gate. And on the front gate, I have a nice latch. It happens to be black. But that's okay, that's kind of some of the theme of what's going on around here is black hardware, so it won't look too out of place. And you won't see it at the same time as the hinges anyway. I'll trim those off. That looks very sturdy. And these will certainly help hold the whole structure together too. There's so much strength into the design. I'm pretty confident we won't have sagging, at least for a few years. This product is a Thompson's water seal. And it's very inexpensive compared to a lot of the water seals that I was shopping for. And I've had really good luck with it. Kind of the thing that you want to do is put it on too thick. They really caution you against that. In the instructions, it's not like a shellac where you want a big thick coat. You do want it to penetrate, but one thin coat is what's recommended. And the excess needs to be wiped off. But this particular cedar 1x4 has a smooth side and a rough side. And in assembling it, I alternated them purposely. This is the back of the gate. We have rough side on the straight pieces and smooth side on the angle pieces. And from the front of the gate, it looks the opposite. But the rough and smooth side take the sealer at a different rate. So it's really difficult to keep a consistent application going. My main concern is to keep the tone color and keep the cedar from turning gray. Evidently, the best way to apply this is with a pump sprayer once you get the gate hung up. And I will do that in the spring. It's just raining so hard out there right now. I don't want to put the gate up in the rain and not be able to apply the sealer for months or weeks at least. Logic aside, I just couldn't take it out there and hang it unfinished or unprotected. Well, it probably doesn't look like I'm doing a thin coat, but I'm doing one coat. And that's all that's going to be on it until spring when things dry out around here. 
We set the railroad tie posts in the rain the other day, and I didn't film that, but we'll show you what we've got set up. And it was really important that the distance be right so that this comes together in the middle. Of course, I could always put more wood on the inside, but once I concreted those posts, and if they weren't far enough apart, it would be a real, real problem. So I'm holding my breath because I've got it so that uh, the doors should come really close together, maybe a half an inch, I'm hoping. So we'll go down to the entrance and I'll show you those railroad ties where we concreted them into the ground. We found this antique logger style gate in the ground and we love it. Uh, we want to keep it as kind of like a museum feature piece, you know. So we won't be using it as much. But it's going to remain here for now because we, well, we just think it's really cool. We've got railroad ties in the ground, two bags of concrete in each side and packed with gravel, a couple feet in the ground. So we're hoping that'll last a long time. The railroad ties we found on the property, but we're skinning it out with this for extra strength and it makes a nice boxed in look. You need to drill a pilot hole drill. so that you don't have to work for three days to twist the great big bolt in. And then learn how to use your crescent wrench like a ratchet. Yeah. yeah. That's a really handy, useful, adjustable, adjustable hammer. Idea. Probably make a tool for this, right? Mm, yeah, you're using it. <laughs> I don't have one. What else is cool about these is they're adjustable in and out so we can level the gate, fine tune it. Obviously, you have to go a whole turn, but if the top of the gate has to come out to lower that, we can loosen this one and back out just a little bit. Watch this. Yeah, check, check this out. Get out, thank you. <laughs> well, there you are, family. An English field gate in the Pacific Northwest. How'd you like it? Leave me a comment, please, and hit that like button. If you'd like the measurements, go ahead and hit me up. Sure, appreciate you watching. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.